Today I am making three dump and go freezer meals that you can make in your Instant Pot. Now if you've seen some of my freezer meal videos, you know that everything is prepped, ready to go, and I just throw everything in. But when I am doing freezer meals on my own, by myself, I find it kind of take you through step by step so you can see kind of the systems that I use when I make them. So if you guys are ready, let's get cooking. The very first thing that I do is get the freezer bags and then I'm going to write what they're called and also how long you cook them for. Then I like to cut up all the vegetables for each recipe and put them in either little individual baggies or little bowls. Now when it's time to make the recipe, I like to open all of my cans so these are ready to go. You can dump them in so quickly. Then I wanna make sure all my meat is cut up or it's cooked on the skillet or whatever the directions ask for. I take care of the meat. And last but not least, I get all the other ingredients ready. I even open the packages to make my life a little bit easier. The first recipe I'm making is called Fiesta Chicken. It has a ton of flavor. I love the beans that are in it. It's super simple that even your kids could cook it. Okay, so I'm first gonna start with my chicken. I love to put it in the bottom of my freezer meal bag. It just makes my life a little easier. We're gonna add the rice next. So we have two cups of rice. You can rinse your rice if you want to. If you know me by now, I don't rinse my rice. Next is the canned goods. So we have some black beans we're gonna dump in, some canned corn. Now it said the recipe called to drain this corn. I feel like it's okay if you leave it, but we drained it today. Then we have Rotel tomatoes. We have two cans of those. Now this is optional. These are diced jalapenos. They're super hot. So I'm just actually gonna add just a little bit of these so my kids will still eat the recipe. So if you use your finger, make sure you wash your hands later. You will regret it if you don't. Next, we have one packet of ranch seasoning and then one packet of taco seasoning. Okay, so we're actually gonna close this up now just because we're gonna add our liquid when it comes time to cooking it and I'll show you that in just a little bit. Look at those layers, this is awesome. All right, now you have a few options when it comes to freezing it. I like to lay mine flat and stack them on top of each other, but some people like to make them more of a round shape so they'll easily fit in the Instant Pot. But I would suggest having this thawed before you cook it. That's how I'm gonna cook it and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, now this is all thawed, ready to go. If it's frozen, I wouldn't suggest doing this from frozen unless you took your rice out, if you didn't freeze your rice. But because I froze my rice, you wanna make sure you stick it in the fridge the night before so you're ready to go. So we're just gonna dump this whole thing into the Instant Pot. And you can see that my rice, we put one of the first things down and that's kind of how I wanted it. I wanna make sure that we have enough water that it will cover it. So I have about two and a half cups of water. And the goal is we just need to cover this rice. So you actually wanna get a spoon and you wanna make sure all your rice is touching the water. Cause if it's not, you're gonna have crunchy rice and no one wants crunchy rice. All right, we're gonna put the lid on. Now this one has a little knob, so we wanna make sure it's on sealing. Okay, we're gonna go pressure cook and then we're gonna go up to 12 minutes, set the timer and then you can just walk away. All right. We let all the pressure out, done cooking. Let's check this out, woo! Done cooking, mixing it all up. The four-year-old is very opinionated about her mixing, huh? Yes, oh, this looks so good. While that's cooling, we're just gonna shred a little bit of Colby and Monterey Jack cheese. We need cheese on top of this. Put this into my bowl. Freshly shredded cheese on top. I'm gonna serve it just like this. All right, guys. Taste test. Favorite part of cooking. Mm. Yes, huge fan. You could also take this and make some delicious enchiladas with it too if you need it a little more saucy, but for me, this is perfect. The next recipe I'm making is three envelope pot roast sliders. Now, a few years back, this is one of our most popular recipes, but we made it in the slow cooker, so I'm changing it around making it in the Instant Pot to make it a lot easier for you. Now, I had a wonderful helper put the meat in the bag because if you missed it, I had a huge announcement a few videos back. I'll put it right up there in case you wanna see what it is and why I don't do meat right now. I put my chuck roast in here. Then I'm gonna add just one cup of salsa. And if you know me, you know I like to eyeball. We eyeball a lot here. Yeah, that looks like a cup. Then it's called three envelope sliders for a reason. So we're gonna have one package of Lipton onion soup mix, one package of zesty Italian seasoning, and then one package of au jus gravy. 
Now I know those sound like they don't go together, but I'm telling you, this has so much flavor. And then we're just gonna add one cup of water just right on top to mix all those spices together. And that is it. So we're gonna pull this off and I'm going to show you how I cook it. Now, I like to do this one thaw too. You're just gonna throw everything in. There's enough liquid in there right now that it will pressurize just fine. Now you can do this from frozen too, that's totally fine. You will cook it for a little bit longer. So I'm actually gonna put the lid on. Oh, there's no sealing or venting thing to, on this Instant Pot. You're gonna push pressure cook, and then I'm actually gonna cook this for about an hour. So you're gonna push pressure cook or manual button, and then I'm gonna cook this for about an hour and a half, just because I like it nice and tender. Now my secret with cooking roasts is that you put it in in the morning, you let it cook for about 90 minutes or so, and then you're gonna leave it in there until it's time for dinner. So I like to do it in the morning so it will stay in there for about six to eight hours. That's how you get a very tender roast in the Instant Pot. It's like a slow cooker, but just a little different. All right, we are all done here. We're gonna go ahead and lift it up. Ah, oh, looks good. It's been sitting for a few hours. It's easiest for me to just pull it out and to shred it on here instead of shredding it in the Instant Pot. All right, so I've shredded all the beef. Now I'm just gonna put it right back into the sauce because that's what makes it taste so good. The meat is done, it's time to make the sliders. So I have Hawaiian rolls, which are my favorite. We're just cutting them in half. I like to stick mine in like a nine by 13 pan. So I put the bottom of the sliders down. So I'm first gonna add the meat. So as you add it, you wanna make sure that you try and drain as much juice as possible out because they will get pretty soggy if you do not. Okay, our meat is on. It doesn't look as pretty as it could, but that's okay. And then I'm just gonna add a little piece of cheese to each slider. We wanna put the cheese on top because that's what we want to melt as we broil it. Okay, now we're gonna take these and put them in the broiler. When the cheese is good and melted, it's time to put the tops on. You can cook it with the tops too, but I just like the cheese to be melted and I'm good to go. Here are our taste testers. We have Maylee and Sarah. Wanna try it? Maylee, take a bite for me. Nice, what would you rank it? Mm, a four. A four, nice. All right, Sarah, you gonna try it? It tastes too yucky. It tastes too yucky. At least you're honest about it. You're gonna, you're gonna give it a bite? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yummy, woohoo! I'll give it a five. A five, awesome. Thanks, taste testers. <laughs> The next recipe I'm making is called pasta fagioli. Now, I had to look that up of how to say it because I was slaughtering it. So, here's the correct pronunciation. Pasta fagioli. And a huge thanks to Mallory. If you haven't met Mallory. Hi, Mallory. Hi. She's picking the meat for me. All right, so the first thing we're doing for this recipe is cooking up the meat. And then once that's cooked a little bit through, we're gonna add the delicious onions. Okay, so we put in our ground beef and onions and garlic, put it all in there. So next we're gonna add our kidney beans. Now I rinsed and drained those. Then I have one can of tomato soup. Now for my pre-cut items. We have two cups of carrots, and I love getting the big carrots and just cutting them little. I just like the flavor of them a little bit more. Then we have two peppers here. I have a yellow pepper and a red pepper. And then it calls for one cup of celery, but I love celery, so this is close to two cups and I feel okay about it. And we're just gonna add some seasoning. So we have Italian seasoning and salt and pepper. We'll just put right on top. We're gonna close it up right now, just because we don't wanna add the noodles yet. We're gonna wait for those. So I'm gonna show you how I cook the noodles and the beef broth. So we're gonna put this aside. You just wanna make sure you have some little noodles and then some beef broth. All right, so to cook it, I like to cook it thawed. It just makes it a lot easier. If it is frozen, it will still work, but just make sure that all your pasta is covered with some liquid. Okay, we're just gonna dump this whole thing in. Now I'm gonna pour in all the pasta, and this is the little pasta. It's so tiny, I can't pronounce it very well, so I'm not gonna, but we're gonna put all of it in. Then we just have three cups of beef broth, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do in just a second, because we wanna make sure all that pasta is covered. So to cover the pasta, we have liquid in there. We're actually just gonna try and scoot the pasta down 
into the liquid. I'm gonna add a little bit more liquid because I need that pasta covered. So in all, I'm actually gonna add four cups of the chicken broth. Well, it's about as covered as I can get. So we're just gonna put the lid on, turn that little, <laughs> little knob to ceiling, not venting. So you're gonna push pressure cook or manual. We're actually just gonna go to five minutes because we need the vegetables and pasta cooked. So once you set it, you can just walk away. All right, for some reason it did not film. So I apologize, I did not like push it correctly. So this is our fazoli all cooked. We're gonna have a little sampler by my daughter Ensley. All right, because noodles are not my favorite thing right now. Ensley's here to taste the fazoli, right? Okay. Yes. Now she told me, she's like, Mom, can I have ketchup on it? So, there you go, kid. I'll let you be in charge of your own catch. Okay. Pretty good? Mm -hmm. Thoughts, feelings? I like it, but same as her right now, I don't really like noodles. You don't like it? <laughs> no, so, what, what's your ranking? What's your ranking? I still kind of like it, so I'll give it a two. A two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I mean, you stay, stay, stay by your number. All right, guys, if you want more freezer meal ideas, I got some good ones for you right over there. All right, I'll see you next time.